Hello everyone, I'm Gogi and here is the review of Daiwa 40 inch Full HD Smart TV available in India for a price tag of Rs 23,500. This Smart TV is available on Amazon and it's uh, manufactured in India. Let's quickly unbox. Inside the box you'll get uh, the warranty card, a user manual, here is the user manual, four screws for the TV stand, a remote, now this looks like a traditional TV remote. This remote is good enough for basic TV functions but if you want to use it with the smart TV functions that gets a bit difficult. But thankfully you also get an extra remote, I'll come to that later. If you look at the remote it's bulky and weirdly shaped. Inside the box you'll also get two batteries for the remote and uh, this is the second remote that I was talking about. It has this uh, TV functionality on one side and on the other side. There is the keypad that helps input data quickly, especially useful when using the smart TV features. This remote is sleek and looks really beautiful and it does come with a built-in battery. You will also get a USB receiver. Now you need this receiver for the remote to work. You will need to plug this into the TV's USB port. And on this remote, there is a micro USB port to charge this remote. And for that, you also get a charging cable. Inside this box pack, you will also get a wall mount kit and stands. You can either place this TV on a wall or use this stand. But uh, the bigger TVs look better on a wall. And finally the 40 inch TV and this is how the TV looks with the stand. Taiwa 40 inch smart TV comes with 0 0.A plus grade panel supporting full HD resolution that's 1920 by 1080 pixels. This TV is decently slim. It is similar to the other low cost TVs available in the market. Build quality looks and the finishing is very good considering the price tag. This TV supports eco mode that helps consume less power. On the back, there are ports on the sides as well as at the bottom. There are left right SP ports. Below that, you will find two USB 2.0 ports. And this is interesting, you will also find a SD card reader. Below that, there is the audio video ports. And uh, on the bottom side, you'll find a RJ45 port for connecting wired LAN, audio video ports. There's also the VGA in so you can connect your PC and uh, use this TV as a monitor. There is the PC audio and two HDMI ports along with RF, that's the antenna port. There are dedicated buttons on the back for basic TV functions in case uh, you are not able to find the remote or the remote is damaged. So you can use these buttons. The first thing that you would want to do is to plug in the remote USB receiver into one of the USB ports. So I'm inserting it here. And now I'm going to switch on the power. When you switch on, you'll get the Taiwa logo. The smart TV is powered by one gigahertz 32 bit quad core processor and uh, loaded with one GB RAM and four GB of internal storage space. I'm going to use this remote to control this TV. This is more than enough. This special remote can also be used like an air mouse. You can see the pointer on the screen. And I just move my hands around and uh, the pointer will move around. Very good for navigation. Look at the interface. It's pretty new, different from what I've seen on the other smart TVs. In fact, it is much better. It's very clean and it is very easy to use. So I'm going to use this remote trying out the air mouse feature that's basically moving the remote around and uh, making sure to bring the pointer to the place where I want to use it. For example, I'm going to the apps, click on OK button and that's it. I'm in the application menu. You can also use the four way navigation buttons on the remote to move around the menu system. Now the next thing that I'm going to check in the system settings is the Android version. It's running KitKat 4.4.4. That's pretty outdated. There is built-in Wi-Fi and I'm going to enter the password using the keypad on the back of the remote. 
it's much easier using the keypad. If you want, you can also use the on-screen keyboard, but it's much faster using the remote with the keypad, of course. Overall system performance is good, but uh, when you're running some application, it does take some time for the application to start. Now, this is common with most of the smart TVs. I'm now going to try running the browser application. That's the browser application. OK button using the remote and the browser is loaded. I'm now going to punch in my website geogi.in using the keypad on the remote. It's much easier this way. And once done, I just press the enter button on the keypad and my website is loaded. Almost all of the low-cost smart TVs available in the market are running outdated Android operating system. That's Android KitKat 4.4.4. And the problem with this outdated operating system is that some of the applications will not update. Now, before I continue further, I'm going to add my Gmail account so that I can use the Google Play Store as well as YouTube. And uh, I have now added my Gmail account. And here is how the Google Play Store will look like. The next thing that I'm going to try is running the YouTube app. When I run it for the first time, I get a message that there is an update available. But when I try to update, it doesn't update. So here is YouTube running on a 40 inch TV. I'm now going to play a 1080p video. And there is a problem here. When running a 1080p video, the video does not work. It is still. But the audio, I'm able to hear the audio. So the video is still, I'm able to hear the audio. But when I reduce the YouTube video quality to lower than 720p, video and audio works properly. So that's a big problem here. There is a problem running 1080p videos using YouTube on this TV. However, when you are running a 1080p video from a pen drive or a SD card, there is no such issue. I guess there is some problem with the Wi-Fi. Probably it's not that strong, pretty weak. In fact, uh, my primary router is just next to the TV. So I should not be facing this problem. I also checked for the software updates. This TV is already running the latest version. In fact, it's already running a outdated version. So don't expect something new, some new updates. This is the media player window. You can also connect your smartphone and stream contents from your smartphone onto this TV. The sound output is loud and clear. There are two speakers of 10 watts each. I have now connected an external pen drive and I'm playing a 1080p video from that external pen drive. And as you can see, it's playing very smooth. There is a problem playing with YouTube, but uh, when you're using the pen drive, the 1080p video works really great. Viewing angles are also very good. You can clearly see the picture from different angles. As I have already mentioned, most of the smart TVs available in the market are running Android KitKat, an outdated version. So as far as the smartness is concerned, these TVs are not really that smart. However, considering the price, these TVs are still a very good buy. All you need to do is to ignore the smart features on this TV and buy a HDMI dongle like the Chrome or the recently launched uh, ReTV. This Daiwa 40 inch smart TV is a very good option considering the price and this special remote. But ignore the built in smart features and better get a HDMI dongle for a better smart TV experience. Another variant of this TV is also available that is without the smart features and without the smart remote. Do subscribe to my channel and do like this video.